Section 3.4, Matrix Solutions to Linear Systems. The first thing we need to do when we talk about using matrices to solve a system of equations, we're going to use row operations to do this. And so let's talk about the different row operations that we are allowed to do. So if I have this matrix right here, then this is row 1. This is row 2, and this is row 3. And so there's three things I'm allowed to do. I'm allowed to switch the rows in as far as what which one they're in. Like I can take row 1 and switch it with row 2, which is something we'll do in part C here. I can multiply a row by a number, like on A, and then I can also multiply a row by a number and add it to another row. Those are the three operations I'm allowed to do. So it starts off pretty simply here with if I want to take row 1 and I want to multiply it by negative 2, I need to draw my matrix and I need to say, all right, if I multiply everything up here by negative 2, what are my new values? Well, that'd be negative 4, positive 6, negative 2, and then this line is where our equal signs are, and then negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Row 1 is the only thing that changed, so everything else we would just rewrite. So there's row 2, and there's row 3. So that's part A. It's just negative 2 times row 1. Part B is the most complicated really of what we get because row b we want to times row 2 by negative 3 and add it to row 3. Now when we're doing this we need to remember row 3 is the only thing that's going to change. That's just the rule that if I do negative 3 times row 2 and I add it to row 3 I'm not changing row 1 at all and I'm really I'm not changing row 2 for my new matrix. I'm going to use row 2 in order to change row 3. So whatever your last row is that it talks about is the only row that's going to change. Alright, so we need to say what is negative 3 times row 2? I like to write this like above the row, like 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, 22 times negative 3 is negative 66. Because I'm going to take these now and add them to these values in row 3. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 9 plus a negative 1 is negative 10. Negative 24 plus 2 is negative 22. And negative 66 plus 12 is negative 54. Okay, so that's my answer on that one. So notice I didn't use I didn't use the answer from A. I just went back to this matrix and said, okay, uh, what is it if I multiply row 2 by negative 3 and then add it to row 3? Okay, part C. This one's the easiest to do because I'm just switching row 1 and run row 2 as far as their spots go. Like row 2 is 1, 3, 8, 22. Like I'm moving it to row 1. And then row 2 now becomes row 1. So they just switched places. And then I'm done. Okay, because row 3 didn't change at all for that one. I just switched row 1 and row 2 spots. So those are the things that we're allowed to do. Now let's talk about how to use matrices to solve a system of equations. Now this is going to seem like a really long way to do this, but we're practicing on a simple set of equations so, because if we were to practice on the ones that it's actually easier to do row operations on than to use substitution or elimination or whatever, um, it would take us forever. Okay, so we're going to practice on an easy one and we're going to practice on like a 3x3 three three matrix and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to write this as like I have an X column, I have a Y column, and then I have a line to show where my equal signs are, 
and this is like kind of like an answer column that if I'm saying, well, if I do this side, I get these as an answer. Okay, so the numbers in front of my x's are 4 and 1. The numbers in front of my y's are negative 3 and 2, and my answers are negative 1, negative 15, sorry, and negative 1. Okay, now, really quickly, here is my goal when I'm doing row operations to get this into what's called row echelon form. So I'm trying to get a 1 in the top left, a 0 underneath that, and then a 1 to the right. And everything else can just be whatever number it wants to be in all of my other spots. Okay, and there's an order that I do this in, that I'm going to start here at the 1, and then I'm going to go down and get this 0, and then I'm going to go over and get the 1. Okay, now what our goal is, is to get 1s in our diagonal, and then a 0 anywhere that's underneath my diagonal. So let's think about what I can do to get a 1 here. Well, wouldn't it be really nice if I could just, if I had this 1 up here instead of it being down here? So let's just switch the rows around. I'm going to switch row 1 with row 2. Okay, so that's going to give me 1, 2, negative 1, and 4, negative 3, negative 15. Okay, so any time that we're doing our first step where we want a 1 here, if either of our rows has a 1 in the first spot, then the first step we should do is to just switch the rows. Now I want to get a 0 here. So I can use adding the rows together to get a 0. I have to use adding the rows together to get a 0. And so what could I multiply row 1 by that would give me a 0 whenever I add it to this? Well, that's going to be a negative 4, right? Negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. So what I'm doing is negative 4 times row 1 plus row 2. Okay, so when I do this, I'm not actually changing row 1. I'm just using row 1. Okay, but I need to think about what is negative 4 times row 1, which gives us this, if I times this first row by negative 4, and then add it to my row 2. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. 4 minus 15 is negative 11. Okay, so I got a 0 right here where I wanted it. And then my last step here with my matrix at least is to get this one here. Anytime we want to get a 1 that we can't, that we're not like at the very first one where we could just switch, we want to multiply the row by its reciprocal. So it's reciprocal, the reciprocal of negative 11 is still negative, and it's 1 over 11. Because really what I want to do is divide this by negative 11, because that will get me a 1 here. But I'm not really allowed to divide matrices, so to get around that, or divide by a number in a matrix. And so to, to get around that, I would just times it by the reciprocal. So our first row stays the way it was. Our second row becomes 1 and 1, because I'm dividing both of those by negative 11. Now we're almost done. We're going to switch this back to a system of equations, because this is 1x plus 2y equals negative 1. This is 0x, so there's not an x. And then 1y equals 1. So now what we can do is we can plug this 1 in for our y and figure out what x is. x plus 2 times 1 equals negative 1. x plus 2 equals negative 1, which means x, if I subtract the 2's, equals negative 3. So I get negative 3 comma 1 for my answer. Okay. So the biggest thing on this is that it takes practice. Like, you do basically the same steps every time because you want a 1 here, you're going to try to switch your rows around so that you can get a 1. If not, you multiply the row by the reciprocal. Then you're going to use row 1 times something to give you a 0 here 
for row 2. And then last, you're going to multiply that by the reciprocal to get the one right here. So that's a 2 by 2 system of equations. Let's look at a 3 by 3 system of equations. So we have an x and a y and a z column and then an answer column. So 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2, 2, 2, 31, 19, 25. Now, our goal for this is a little slightly different, which really is just because it's bigger. I still want a 1 here and a 1 here, but I'm adding to it that I want a 1 right here. My diagonal is going to end up being all 1s. Underneath my diagonal, I want zeros, and so that wasn't supposed to be there. I just want numbers everywhere else. Ignore that dot, please. That was not supposed to end up there. Okay, so this is my goal. Like last time, I'm going to start with this 1, and then I'm going to move down to the zeros. And then I'm going to come over here to this one, and then move down. And then lastly, I want to get this one. So it's like I'm going by column. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to switch my rows around because I want either this one or this one to end up being here. It doesn't matter which one we switch. So a lot of people here, if they're look, trying to look ahead, might say, let's switch row one with row three. And they might say that because they're like, well, row two, I want that one in the middle, right? Well, no matter which way you do it, it's not gonna it's not gonna be any easier. Like even if I switch row one and row two, I'm gonna have the same amount of work as if I do row one and row three because I'm gonna end up changing this one when I try to get a zero here. But in case you don't believe me, let's try it. Let's switch the rows around. So row three comes up here. Row two stays where it was. And row 1 moves down to the bottom. Now, this is going to be kind of a lot of work. But that's okay, because solving three variable systems, no matter what, is a lot of work. I got a 1 in the top left. Now I want to get a 0 right here where this 1 is. To do that, I need to take the row I just made a 1 and multiply by something so that these cancel out. Well, I just need to multiply it by a negative 1 in this case, because that'll get it to cancel out. So I'm saying that this will be negative 1, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 25, and I'm going to add that to row 2. So row 1's not changing, it's just being used. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, See how that one changed? Can't really help it. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 25 plus 19 is negative 6. Okay, now let's go ahead and figure out how to get a 0 here. This is kind of the only time that I can do two steps at once, is to say I'm not going to mess up my matrix if I go ahead and get the 0 here. Because I'm going to take row 1 and multiply it by a negative 3, and that'll give me a 0. Okay, so this time, I'm going to write my numbers over here. If I multiply by negative 3, I get negative 3, negative 9, negative 6, and negative 75. So 0, negative 8, because now I'm adding, like, negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, and negative 75 plus 31 is negative 44. Okay, so I've got my first column here done. I need to move to the second one and get a 1 in this very middle spot. So to do that, I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 1 half. So my first row stays what it was. 
my second row I'm multiplying by a negative one half. Zero times negative one half is zero. Negative two times negative one half, that's really negative two divided by negative two, which is one. Zero times negative one half is zero. Negative six times negative one half is really negative six divided by negative two, which is three. Then my row three did not change. Okay, and anytime I'm I'm doing this now where I want a zero here, I always need to use the row that I just changed to a one. It's gonna make you not screw up on accident, basically. Because um, sometimes there's another row we can use, but I know that multiplying by row two will always work. I need to get an eight here so that when I add these, I get zero. So eight times row one plus row three not row two, sorry, row two. Eight times row two, because that's where my one is, plus row three. So one stays the same. Row two actually is gonna stay the same. And then I need to change row three. So this will be, if I times this by eight, zero, eight, zero, 24. So zero and zero gives me zero. Eight minus eight gives me zero and 0 minus 4 gives me negative 4. 24 minus 44 gives me negative 20. So my very last step here is I need a 1 here where I have a negative 4. So let's multiply by a negative 1 fourth on row 3. So everything else stays the same. And I get 0, 0, 1, 5. Because negative 20 divided by negative 4 gives me 5. And now here's the next part of what I'm doing. Okay, I've done all this work, and so what does this mean? Well, I'm going to change this back to a system of equations where I have 1x plus 3y plus 2z equals 25. And then I don't have an x, I just have 1y, I don't have a z equals 3, and then I just have z equals 5. Okay, well, if I did have a z here, I'd have to go back and plug in 5 and find y, but I don't, so I just have y equals 3. So that means I can just plug in y and z into my first equation to get x. And solve. This is 9, this is 10, so that's really x plus 19 equals 25. I'd subtract the 19 on both sides and get x equals 6. So my answer is 6, comma, 3, comma, 5. And that is solving systems using row operations on matrices.